Hi, now don't worry, this video is not about ChatGPT like almost all other videos on YouTube at the moment, but I recently recorded some voiceover clips from my girlfriend. I really went to town on processing them, because I could, I guess. But then I found out about the Adobe tool that can actually do this automatically for you, and it promises professional results. So let's go. So like I mentioned in the intro, last weekend I recorded a couple of voiceover clips for my girlfriend and even did a post about it on social media. Now she is originally from the UK, so she has a very nice British pronunciation which you're about to hear. And I did spend quite some time on processing a voice to make it sound, well, as good as possible, at least to me. Now I don't regularly process voiceovers, except for my own voice for these videos. But usually I process singing voices, of course, for songs of our band. So I always wonder how my processing stacks up to how somebody else would do it. And then I learned about this tool from Adobe, which is part of the Adobe Podcast online suite, which automatically does all voice processing for you. And currently it's still in beta and it's free. Let's have a look at the website. So this is the Adobe Podcast website. And basically it allows you to do audio recording and editing powered by AI. And you need to request specific access for this. But if you're logged into a free Adobe account as well, if you scroll down, there's also the section about AI powered audio, enhanced speech, increases clarity by removing background noise and sharpening your voice's frequencies. It makes it sound as if everything was recorded in a professional studio. Try it out. If you click over there, you can basically upload a file a pretty long and big one actually. And then it processes this audio for you using artificial intelligence and it promises professional results. Now there have been quite a few videos already using this tool to process, for example, voices recorded just via an iPhone or on a very bad microphone or in very windy or noisy conditions. So I'm not gonna repeat that. I'll put some links in the description to some of those videos so you can check them out for yourself. But in this case, I recorded my girlfriend's voice through this SM7B, going directly to my A-Design Specifica preamp and into my RME converters. So it's a pretty decent chain and I'm really wondering how Adobe Podcast will process that kind of audio and how it compares to the processing that I did myself. So let's first have a look at the original audio clip and how I did my own processing on that audio clip so that we can later compare it to the Adobe Podcast processed clip. Let's dive into Cubase. So this is the short clip. I guess it's about, well, nine seconds. And the first thing I did is I increased the level because I didn't put the SM7B right in her face. I didn't particularly want that very close radio voice. So it was at a bit of a distance from her, maybe like 30 centimeters or so. And even though I have a cloud lifter between the microphone and the preamp, the level was still pretty low, so I just boosted it by this Britson channel. I also use that in my mixes, but it could just as well be a clean boost upping the gain in Cubase. But let's have a listen to that with just the added gain. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. So you may hear that there's quite a bit of noise on the recording, probably due to the low level. So the first thing I did, I added some noise removal by Acon Digital. And I first made a noise profile by sampling part of the file in which she didn't speak. So there was just noise. So the plugin could learn about the noise. And then I added the processing so that the plugin would remove the noise. Now there's various plugins for this that can do the same. Isotope RX, Waves has a couple of plugins like this, but I'm using the Acon Digital one. And this is the result. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. So quite effective for the noise removal. Now, even though the noise was properly dealt with, I still added a gate so that in the pauses when she doesn't speak, it really turns down the volume, both the noise or anything from the environment that the microphone may have picked up. And then it sounds like this. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. Next up, always a good thing for voices, using Sooth 2. I actually just tried a couple of presets and like this one, female vocals full range, just to deal with some of the resonances that are in there. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma. And then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. The next plugin is a de and this one is from Wise, from their mastering suite of plugins, and it's really good. So I applied two bands of de to get rid of some of the harsher S sounds, and it sounds like this. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. 
Now, so far, there's no compression on it yet. So I decided to add that in the form of SmartCom2 by Sonable. I selected the speech high profile. Let it do its thing by learning about the signal and figuring out the parameters itself. And it came up with a compression ratio of almost two to one, attack of 14 milliseconds and an auto release. So let's listen to what that does. I did the business side of vocational secondary education. And I also had an accounting and typing diploma. And then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. So around 8 dB of compression max, okay. Then I added some EQ processing, got rid of the very low end, which really just contains rumble for a voice. Increased the high end a bit to make it a bit more crisp. And there was a resonance here that I didn't like, so I also got rid of that one. And that makes the recording sound like this. I did the business side of vocational secondary education. And I also had an accounting and typing diploma. And then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. Now I did notice that because I increased the high frequencies a bit, that there were some S's slipping through again. So last in the chain, I added another de step, this time by FabFilters Pro DS, and adjusted the threshold to get rid of some more sharp S sounds, resulting in the final processing. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam which to me made it sound like a pretty nice voiceover. And I have to say that on my own voice, I do very similar processing for these YouTube videos. But if you're a voiceover pro, please tell me what you would have done differently for this voice or for my own voice in these videos for that matter. Now, before we let Adobe Podcast go to work, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets spread to more people. Subscribe to the channel and you can also ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I post another video. And for even more support, you can use the super thanks button below. Or if you want to buy anything at these stores, you can use the affiliate links down in the description. Highly appreciate it. So let's now have a look at how Adobe Podcast processes this clip. This is the WAV file of the clip, so I can just drop it in here. Enhancing speech takes a while, still enhancing. Some files take up 10 minutes. Well, it's a short file, so I assume this will not take that long, but I'll speed it up for you. So there we go, it's done. Uh, I can now play it, enhanced and not enhanced, but let's just download it and put it into Cubase. Row 05 enhanced. So I now imported the Row 05 enhanced clip by Adobe Podcast into Cubase. And then I synced them up and I also level matched both of them. Let's first remind ourselves again of how my processing sounded. I did the business side of vocational secondary education. And I also had an accounting and typing diploma. And then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. Now let's now listen to the Adobe podcast version. I did the business side of vocational secondary education. And I also had an accounting and typing diploma. And then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. So it definitely sounds quite different to me. The things that are the same to me is Adobe Podcast did boost the level up quite a lot as well. In fact, when I level matched both of them, they only differed 0.2 dB. So it boosted the level in a very similar way as I did on my processing. And another aspect in which I feel they are very similar is that the noise was very well removed. The difference to me, however, is that the Adobe Podcast version sounds much darker and less crisp and detailed. So let's have a listen again when I switch between the two so you can more easily hear the difference. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma. And then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. Now I also had true balance on both channels, so we can compare the frequency spectrum. The first one is of the clip that I processed, and the second one is of the clip that Adobe Podcast processed. And I both had the speech high profile selected here, which according to True Balance is the ideal spectrum for speech with a high vocal. Now, first of all, none of the processing falls within that profile. And you can basically see the difference here that you can also notice when you listen. On my clip, there's less low end over here. On the Adobe clip, there's much more low end. And on my clip, there's more high end, and there's much less high end on the Adobe clip. Now before I go on to my conclusion, I have a bonus tip and that bonus tip is about removing the noise. Because while I was comparing my original processing to the Adobe podcast processing, I figured, well, do I maybe have another tool that uses AI to process audio? And then I remembered that a while ago I bought Clarity VX by Waves, which is also for processing speech mostly. But it's not quite the same because it doesn't do full processing of the speech file, but it just removes background noise. 
So the third clip is now a copy of the first clip, except I took off all the processing except for the boost in level so that at least we have a similar level that we can listen to. And I put Clarity VX on there, but currently the processing is at zero. So I will now first play through the clip so that you can hear the noise again, and then I'll turn up Clarity VX to remove the noise. So let's have a listen. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. I did the business side of vocational secondary education, and I also had an accounting and typing diploma, and then I started working at the Bank of Amsterdam. Yeah, so I thought those results were pretty good for a plugin with only one knob. It basically removed the noise without having to take a noise profile or setting up multiple dials to dial in the effect. So I will probably use this in the future to denoise any signals that need it. Now as for the Adobe Podcast speed enhancing, it may give surprising results when you record your voice with low-end gear, like an iPhone for example, or maybe a budget microphone. But to me, it does not really give the same quality when you have recorded your voice with a professional microphone and professional gear, and you compare it to when you process that voice yourself. Obviously it's a lot faster, and if you're unsure about how to process a voice, well, you can get some nice results. But what do you think? Maybe you like the Adobe podcast processing much better than mine. So let me know in the comments. And if you have any tips for speech processing, put them in the comments as well. Now talking about voice processing and how I record my voice as well as Cubase for these videos, I have a separate video about that. So if you want to know more about that, check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.